Welcome to the Storylux Marketing Podcast. In this season, we explore how marketers use AI to get better results for less money. Over the next weeks, we interview marketers who show us an AI-based marketing process that they actually use daily. In previous episodes, we've learned how to develop a buyer persona, how to write a marketing plan, or how to design your course outline using ChatGPT or BART. But we always encountered the same problem with AI writing, which is, it just doesn't sound like us. On our last episode, we discussed a mega prompt that allows us to write LinkedIn posts with an almost authentic voice. Hannah Murray showed us her prompt sequence that trains ChatGPT on old posts and then makes it write a new post following the same style and language. Today, we add a new dimension to this customization something that promises to change everything again. Custom instructions, the new feature to be rolled out by ChatGPT. Our guest today, John Moore, is based in the US. He already has access to custom instructions and he shows us how he has set up this new feature. He will then show us how he has trained ChatGPT on who he is and how he writes with a result that he has a pretty unique voice and every piece of writing that ChatGPT does for it. Pretty cool stuff. So, by the way, I think John has a dream job. He works from home and he's paid to spend the whole day on LinkedIn. So now let's learn from John how he uses custom instructions and how he's trained ChatGPT to write in his tone and voice. Welcome back to the Starlux Marketing Podcast. And today we have John Moore here on the call. Hi, John. Another great person that I've met thanks to LinkedIn. So testament to the quality of doing networking on LinkedIn. John, tell us about yourself. Tell us about your business and the context for ChatGPT. Sure. I work for a company called TechBank. We are an IT solutions and staff augmentation firm. The company's been open for about 30 years, though my current CEO has been here since about 2000. I came on three years ago. I was originally brought on just to manage talent acquisition, but as the years have passed, I've taken on more responsibility. So now I am over business development. I am over talent acquisition, and now I'm over marketing. And the, the last piece is the real new one and big one right now. And the reason being is because my company, when I took over marketing, had zero online footprint. There was a website that hadn't been touched, I think, in two decades. So now we are working on getting that updated this week. And I am also trying to build the company brand through LinkedIn organically, but I'm also having to build my own personal brand so people have a face for the company. And, and that's where we are right now. Fantastic. Okay, cool. Thanks for giving us an overview of what you do, John. So today, well, I, I have to say a little more than usually because I'm very excited to have you for the reason that you are going to give us a sneak preview into the future of ChatGPT for all of those outside of the US, I think that do not have access to this amazing feature that allows us to, or that allows ChatGPT to remember who you are and what your history is. and. So we're gonna talk about two things. One is, you already mentioned LinkedIn. That's how we met. You work on LinkedIn. What stuck out to me with you on LinkedIn is your unique voice. And that voice has been created by ChatGPT, which is yes. cool. And you do this, I wanna say on an industrial scale, but because you can save your prompt in your history, you can always go back to what you did in the past and you don't have to re-prompt ChatGPT. So let's talk about this new feature and then let's talk about the prompt that makes you unique for ChatGPT and for us reader on LinkedIn. Sounds good. Yeah, the feature is called Custom Instructions. It basically allows you to create a profile of yourself on ChatGPT on how you think how you process information, how you want to sound when it generates whatever you tell it to generate. 
and it allows you to do so in such a way where you don't need to ride a mile long prop to show us absolutely absolutely let me share my screen fantastic and john let's try and remember for those of us who are not watching on youtube but listening on the podcast what we are showing so they're not totally cut off i had some listener complaints saying your podcast is worthless because you don't explain what you see coming up there we and go i see a prompt yeah this is a, a prompt i use for my my post today where i just have to use my wit and humor to write a linkedin post i always start with that that's how i always start it and then i just tell it what i want to talk about and so today it was a post that was inspired by someone's post on toxic managers and then so i went into what i wanted to say on toxic managers i tell it to use bullet points i keep this this is important right here especially with uh writing is keeping the spacing and eyes interested it needs to know that because otherwise it will write a dense essay <laughs> mm. so uh, so interesting you, you the prompt starts with use my wit and humor to write a linkedin post talk about the da so by you saying use my wit and humor it knows john's wit and humor yes. because you've saved that with this new feature so you can basically open a new conversation, just say, hey, use my wit and humor, and then it will write with your wit and humor because it knows who you are. Basically, that's what the feature does. Yes, it does. And as you can see, the feature is right here. It's called Custom Instructions. It'll be under where the, the chat names are, where new chat is, and you, and you do my plan, Custom Instructions. So you go to your name, you'll see the three little dots, you click on it, custom instructions. Awesome. And so when the custom instruction pops up, it says the very, it'll ask you a series of questions and each section gives you 1500 characters to work with. And so if you, where are you based? What do you do for work? What are your hobbies and interests? What subjects can you talk about for hours? What are some of the goals you have? What would you like ChatGPT to know about you to provide better responses? Interesting. Okay. So, and in that section, it says, what would you like ChatGPT to know about you? And I just informed it where I, who I am, where I work, what I do. I, I put my boss's name in there because in case I you reference him. Talk about the things I like to do, where I travel. I have my wife's name in there because I do reference her a lot on LinkedIn. I tell it what I what my goals are, like wanting to make a well-known brand of my company, uh, using my wit and humor, personal philosophy, which is kindness and empathy, standing up for one's convictions. I tell it who I am. And, and this is a place for you to be able to tell it who you are and what makes you uniquely you. Yeah. And tell and me, then, did you come up with this who you are, is that something that also ChatGPT has helped you write? No, you? not at all. Oh, no. okay. That was a, This is 100% uniquely me, and the reason why I did not want to use AI for this is because I didn't want to sanitize it. I, I wanted this to be raw and completely me. That's why it's kind of convoluted, bunched up, but you have to stuff in a whole bunch of information in 1,500 characters. Yeah, it's not a lot. Yeah. Right. And then at the end, I gave myself a nickname, the Whimsical Wizard of Word, because I love writing and people have always commented on what my posts look like, sound like. And so I said, you know what, let me come up with something. And Whimsical Wizard of Words is what I came up with for myself. <laughs> nice. Now, the next one is where it really is important is how would you like ChatGPT to respond? So now that it has the tone of who I am, now I got to tell it what I want my output to look like. So I say, I want my responses to have my wit and humor, saying that I like to use humor, clever turns of phrase, amusing anecdotes, and engage with my audience. And then I say I want it to have an engaging and conversational tone, saying that my writing is relaxed. If uh, I'm having a converse as if I'm having a conversation with the reader. So kindness, empathy, self-improvement. I tell it to be authentic and honest. So 
it's it's going to take everything about me, and that's why I kept it raw. So it's going to be very authentically and honestly me. And then you'll see I tell it to you humor and joy, mindfulness. Mindfulness is very important because I don't want to accidentally insult people. Then, and here's another thing is that people will sometimes who don't have access to them say, chat GPT, what's my name? It, every new conversation, it says, sorry, I'm a l large language model, blah, 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 I can't keep your name. But here, I tell it to address me as John. <laughs> and it will forever and always know me as John. <laughs> nice. And then it'll have my opinions, and, it, and it'll actually remember my opinions as long as I keep it in the conversation. And this one here is also very important when it comes to writing, especially on LinkedIn. I tell my responses to be no longer than 2,000 characters long because I have, before I had access to this, always had to go back and do a whole bunch of super editing because the responses would be over 800 characters to 1,000 characters longer than LinkedIn would allow it. Uh, cool. That is so awesome. I'm so excited then, to see this. So. It, you can enable, you can disable it, enable it, and I just always leave it enabled for new chats. What does it mean to so, enable for new chats? What that means is, let's say you have an existing chat that's already on there. If you click it on there, all, all the chats, this is not going to affect at all. Mm -hmm. And so if you want this to go into effect, it'll only go into effect on new chats. So your mm -hmm. options are to either disable it or have it be available for all new chats moving forward forward it, it, it can't be retroactive yeah but you could also choose to only have it on selected new chats by turning yes on and off yes okay correct and this feature has made my writing so much tighter it makes everything so much better like like the post today that i did on toxic leadership it, it just it cleans it up it just makes all the bullet points it makes everything concise and mm -hmm. tight I love it. And then what I love, too, is where the pacing and spacing comes into play is I, I like to keep the eyeball guessing. So some people will just do, like, these little three to five word sentences in space, three to five word sentence space. I tend to go sentence, two to three sentence, sentence, bullet point. So it's all about keeping the eye guessing on what you're going to see. So in addition to the words, I like to be visually appealing interesting those are you know yeah some people have some of their unique linkedin writing style be sort of like pyramids or like like rectangles yes and, and, the, and the thing you know, yeah and one thing you'll really notice because i read a lot i'm on linkedin all day so it's kind of like my job in between the recruiting and the marketing so what i noticed a lot of people do is they copy each other a ton and hmm. the writing all starts to look the same. And so I say for myself, what will make me unique in writing? I can sound like everyone else. I can follow that trend of writing and try to grow like those people. But I want to grow the way I want to grow like me. I want to be, again, authentically and honestly me. And so that's why I keep my writing style the way I do with the wit, the humor, the need. The transitional language, creating a nickname so there's a thing to attach to people. So I'm not just John. I am the whimsical wizard of word. So there's this thing that people can attach to me. There's a bunch of John Moores out there. But I don't know how many people actually call themselves the whimsical wizard of words or even would be bold enough to do so. <laughs> I know this other John Moore called some of the whimsical. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. I believe it. It's such a common name. Googling me is, it's daunting because there's so many of us out there. Oh. And, and one thing I will tell you, uh, especially when it comes to writing with ChatGPT, is also, despite the fact that it sounds like me, it still requires a lot of editing. So that prompt I showed you earlier, this is what it spit out, right? This is what it looked like when it, when they first took when they first did it, uh, when it's, or should I say, when ChatGPT wrote this. That's not what the final product looks like. I have to 
Let's see if I can stop share on this screen and go to another one. Okay, so we'll come to my page. There I am, everybody, so you know who I am. <laughs> you, you'll see that my, my post today looks a bit different. I, I changed the, the entire intro. I, sh I sure didn't make it tighter because it was too long. The It didn't have the correct, didn't have right spacing for me. But most everything from below is correct and it stayed the same. I did add these little arrow bullet points and I also used another tool to be able to get this bold writing. A lot of people don't know that you can actually use certain applications to get bold and italics and bold italics into your writing yeah. um, so it stands out. Exactly. So it looks different, feels different. It's just not that homogenized look like it came off a typewriter. So look to it. So this is what it looks like. And then as you'll see, this is how I do my spacing. It's quick, 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 and then, okay, let's give it something new to look at. Bold, 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 bold. And then back to quick, quick for the call to actions. And then I make it real blue at the bottom with my contact information and hashtags. And then I create my own um, images um, using Mid Journey and Canva. Yeah. So I, I like people to have something when they well, like that when they're scrolling. If they see this, they go, "Oh, what? That's different!" And then click on it to see what it is. And, yeah. and that's what I try to do. It's so fascinating because now that I see that, I mean, I don't want to say the, in the old days, but you had like this brand guide. What do we look like? And then some of the colors and the fonts and to this, this is us. And uh, I see a future going forward where we also have like the, the writing style guide that we have as a company and that you can have within this company thanks to ChatGPT. So now you can like merge both depending on like what is the policy of the company. And in your case, I, it looks like you have uh, all the freedom that you could ask for. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, which is cool. But uh, just that is very often an issue that I see with people who work in companies and want to work right within that company. It's like, what can I say or how can I say that? What is permissible and what is a company right. policy? And then the company doesn't have a policy and uh, the boss is like, they just do. And they're like, yeah, we don't really dare to do because of uh, da da da. And so um, I see a future where ChatGPT will become part of this definition of like this is company this is you and that is what you yeah. do in some places I, I i can see chat gpt I, I i've come across people who say they want chat gpt to do all of it all the writing all of everything then i sure you can do that but the problem with that going forward if you just use only chat gpt you're going to have everybody sounding like chat gpt even if you give it different prompts, I can tell you there are certain words that ChatGPT loves to use in certain uh, certain styles. And if you've seen enough ChatGPT output, and I use it all the time, mm -hmm. you, you know what to look for when uh, someone is used it. it. Yeah. yeah, it loves the word crucial. It loves the word crucial. Crucial and vital. If, if, if you took crucial and vital out of chat gpt it would probably crack or tremble <laughs> <laughs> absolutely that's why i fill it up with my writing saying hey remember this remember this remember this and so that way when it's spitting out what i tell it to write it doesn't give me that really homogenized version of chat gpt's narrow focus of what it thinks everybody wants to hear it's going to spit out me and, and what I sound like and, and what I want it to sound like. And if I don't like it, I just say, rewrite this section. This is what I'm going for as far as tone or what I want to say. And sometimes it'll use analogies repeatedly. And then I tell it, please stop that. I don't want to do a dancing analogy right now. I don't want a boat analogy. And, and then it'll give me something else. I'll say, give me a sports analogy or give me a business analogy something different because when it comes to analogies again it it latches on to ideas and it doesn't want to let them go ever and you have to tell it to spank it yeah it's, it's kind of like it's kind of like educating a child to be, to become what you want it to be okay cool so 
we have now covered two things. I want to sort of pull them a little bit apart. So the one thing was to set up ChatGPT, tell it who you are, uh, right. so create this definition of yourself, and then have this little toggle to say apply to all future conversations or only the ones that I'm going to tell you about. Um, so that's the other one thing. And then the other thing that I think you have sort of touched on that we haven't really spoken about explicitly, that is showing ChatGPT everything that you've written with your own brain and words in the past. So it not only has sort of this memory of who John Moore is, but also sees your style. And so uh, you did that. You showed your own writing to ChatGPT. And then you did, you asked it to do, an, to do an analysis of like, what is my style? And yeah, can you walk us through that? The, the second pillar of what makes you you on ChatGPT? Sure. So let me pull something up real quick to, I'm going to, I'm going to show you one thing. Uh, where did it go? I'm going to do, I'm going to stuff it with a honeymoon recap. <laughs> so y'all can see what that looks like. Don't need to see me copy and paste a word because everybody knows how that works. So everybody knows how copy and paste and word works. So I'll, I'll tell it to do something like this. So I tell it to read and remember, and remember this as it was written by me and it is my writing style. So that is now that you, something you tell it based on. Yeah. The, the, the piece that it just wrote. Yeah. So the, the, the part that I'm about to stuff in here, well, to remember that is, is what I wrote uh, probably about almost three years ago. And then said, I mean, okay, I read and remember this. I wrote it. It's part of my writing style. So it knows it's me. So I put it all in there and there's this giant recap that, that I did it. And then, okay. okay, so you prompted it, read this colon, and then you sort of pasted something that you wrote. So it took a look at that and now it's analyzing it, or you will tell it to analyze it. And now it's analyzing it. Yeah, so it reads, now certainly, John, I've read and absorbed your delightful honeymoon recap, filled with wit, humor, and vivid imagery. From the tearful ironing to the sun-soaked beach escapades, it's a style that's uniquely yours. It has humor, I have to say, and so on and so on. I won't read the whole thing, but it's a very unique style, how it's responding to what you have just shown it about from, from your writing. And if you, and one thing it also did that it didn't used to do for me because of the custom instructions is the last sentence here where it says it's a style that speaks to both the whimsical wizard of words and the random John in you, which is what people used to call me when I was a kid. Feel free to call upon this style in our future interactions. So now it knows how I write based off of that. Wow. And it's going to, and it's always going to remember that so long as I stay in this conversation. In this conversation. Yeah. That's so cool. And so the way I, I perfect it is I, that was a nine day honeymoon recap. So I did nine days worth of deck style of writing. And then I, I filled it with about five different YouTube scripts that I've written over the past. So it knows exactly what I sound like, how I'm going to come across my tone, everything. So all I have to do is set up the frame. This is what I want to talk about. This is how I'm going to talk about it. These are the things that absolutely have to be in it. And sometimes I'll tell it, do not add these things into it, omit. Mm. And it'll write exactly that. And then if I want to, I can say, all right, let's, let's, let's tweak that, rewrite this section, edit this section, make this part sound like this, and then it spits it out again. Now I mm. feel like, okay, I can work with this. I then take it over to the Hemingway app to get the spacing all correct. I will make the, the, the sentences that are too long be more concise. And then I will also use another tool, how I get the bold I was telling you about in the italics. That is just a LinkedIn text formatter. That one is called linkedinmakeover.com. So you can input text into it and then you can get italics, scripts, bold, things like that. 
And, that, and that's how I do my bullet pointing, and that's how I, I write. So we've covered now the two areas. One is sort of setting up uh, set a chat GPT with the with this new feature telling telling it all about you. And then the second thing is that you showed it a sample of your writing, in your case, your honeymoon papers and some YouTube scripts that you did. That thing is sort of more temporary because it sits only in this one conversation. So next time you write something, you would either refeed that thing again. You have saved it somewhere in a Word doc, so you can just copy and save it. But you have to like retrain it every time you open a new conversation because that's not part of like the base identity that you've created. Right. And, and, and that's uh, if I, I wanted to sound completely and exactly like me, but that's where the custom instructions come in handy because you can tell it uh, what to sound like and how you want it to sound. And so that's why I always had to analyze my writing so I could take that analysis and, and put it into how would I like chat GPT to respond. So even though I fill it with my writing, it's going to really base everything off of this section right here because this is what I told it on how to respond and that's what it's going to do. Hmm. Interesting. So the next step then really, and I don't know whether you've done it, but uh, would be to define certain pieces of writing, let's say, sort of like a certain kind of LinkedIn post, because I see some uh, LinkedIn link, linked influencers, they have sort of a certain library of styles. And if you read all of the posts, you see, okay, this is this typical advice piece that he does. And this is the typical, I don't know, whatever piece, but you can see, I think Justin Welch started this with sort of like having his eight styles or eight post way, ways of posting. Yep. So theoretically, we could now add, I don't know whether you've done it, the third pillar where we say, okay, here is a post or like here are posts that I've done in the past that are very similar in style. Write me sort of like 10 posts and here now write me the left post on this topic using my style and what you know about me. Yep. Have you uh, that, I, that's that's got to be coming next. That's not there yet, but I feel like that's coming. Okay. And anything you want to add here, or is that sort of like the core of how you write at the moment? That is the core of how I do write at the moment. Uh, I do it for myself. That That's just my personal page. I also do it for my company page. Uh, there's, there's a lot of similarities because it's me who's doing the writing, uh, except for the company page. It's more focused on business-related information, whereas my personal page, I just do it mostly to get FaceTime with people, to see me, to become the face of Tech Bank. Yeah. I had a very funny experience the other day. I have to share that. I was I was sure. asked to rework a post by somebody like give feedback on a post. And she had a very vivid description of uh, doing one of these Navy SEAL fight yourself experiences. And she was of like, had her hands tied on the back or something, had to like free herself something. And it was written by a woman. And then I sort of like, it was really sort of like, what do you do in the situation experiences? And sure. uh, she she wrote a story about that. And I took that and wanted to do something with it on ChatGPT. And then ChatGPT saw that and warned me and read, uh, this content looks suspicious. Are you sure this is legitimate content? Because it had sort of like something with, handcuffing and this sort of like free yourself and it was written by a woman and I was like mm -mm. it allowed me to work with it but there was of like a warning this might be explicit content be careful I thought the right I've never seen this before that uh, chat TVT is like watching out for what people are saying it's like 1984 coming up it's like uh, are you allowed oh, to talk yeah. on this subject um, but that's a different story the the mid journey images that you use for your posts how do you get there so like what is the process oh uh, so the process is for me it's very creative sometimes it just pops in my head what i do is i write and then well i always write first the, the writing always comes first and then i say okay what image do i want to go with that once i get mid journey popped up here I'll get that screen share going. If you see me looking to the right, I use multiple monitors. 
<laughs> For all of you who can't see, he is looking to the right. <laughs> that is what I do. So, before I went to Canva, this is what I wrote. So, I knew today that for a toxic manager, what, when I wrote it out, I thought about the toxic Avenger, but wearing a suit. So, the, 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 the comic book character, Toxic Avenger. So, I, I said, I want a person who's made of toxic waste wearing a suit and carrying a clipboard. <laughs> And, and I've made several iterations of it before I settled. And then, and I figured that if it's a toxic work environment that people absolutely don't want, it was either going to be this kind of goofy manager that people do not respect, or it was going to be a scary manager that people fear. And so I went for the fear one because most people that I know who work in these environments, and I was once in that environment myself, it's hard to leave those places. You have responsibilities at home, bills, whatnot. You're scared to leave. So you can view that office in, in that toxic environment like this scary creature here. Like, you, you are subjected to it every day. And that's how I wound up with this guy. And you can also, of course, use your own image to create things. And that's from yesterday's post on LinkedIn uh, that I did about people wanting to get rich well stop paying people <laughs> money so if you give them your money you're not you're not getting rich with your own so so the image we're seeing now so we, we see john sitting on a on a throne golden throne um before we saw john um no not john but a, a toxic monster manager in green with what is it slime all over it? yeah it was just toxic waste so i told him to make a Pixar man of toxic waste wearing a suit and carrying a clipboard was the exact prompt today. Yeah, amazing. And that comes up this. And the other one, you fed it the, an image of yours, or how did it sort of take you? Yeah, so I, I gave it an image of me. I, I, I put my image in there. And so once your image is in there, you have to right click on it and get the image address. Hmm. And so. You say this man, and you got it. For me, I say this man because if you don't stipulate that, it will turn me into a woman occasionally. I say this man, and then I put the image address. And so, uh, for this one, I was going for the idea of people who either want to be rich or chasing money or whatnot. So I said, sitting on a throne, wearing a crown, surrounded by riches, all these things, dark room, warm light, backlight. And so, I did that, and I did that, uh, I was trying to, different iterations of that, till I got the one I wanted, I did it in one, like, I, I love the Pixar characters, for whatever reason, I have no idea, but people respond very well to Pixar characters on LinkedIn. Some of my biggest, Everybody uh, doesn't hope. How to get more is yeah. on LinkedIn, use Pixar images. Yes. And so... I went back and, and, and did mine, and then I just settled on this image here. I felt like that that was kind of what people go for when they want to be uh, power brokers on LinkedIn, rich people on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. This is this is the image, this kind of Game of Thrones type image that people see for themselves. And so, yeah, mm -hmm. that's how these images pop in my head. I write it, and then it's just there, and I and I know exactly what I want. I don't have to think mm -hmm. about it. It's it's kind of. It, 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 it's just what I do. It is I write and then image. Boom. Oh. I, I I know exactly what I want. So it's not something you ask ChatGPT to prompt. That's your idea. Never. You go to majority that gives it to you. Right. Interesting. That's I have never used how you ChatGPT to write a prompt. Yeah. I've never used uh, ChatGPT to write a proper image journal. And you use an image of yourself, basically sort of like a saved file on the journey. It's all, all, almost like on ChatGPT, so like samples of your writing, of your identity. Yes. You have uh, images of yourself on the journey that you keep coming back to uh, for new variations that you ask it to generate. Yes, and if you'll see, it's my LinkedIn profile picture that I use. So that way, there's some continuity between the LinkedIn profile picture and the image people see below. I can use other images of myself, but I want the continuity of that image and what people see. 
I wonder. I mean, it should be possible because for my slideshows, I have sort of like a set of 10, 20 images, stock photos that I use that are like kind of funny. And then I have them in, my, in the back of my head so I can sort of write for these images or write headlights. Mm -hmm. And uh, it is man, it must be possible to sort of train chat to BT and like, okay, these are 20 images. This is what they look like. Uh, now write a post or write me a headline for this post that sort of intelligently plays with, with that image. And I'm not... Do, do you know how the New Yorker, how they come up with their cartoons? I don't know how they do it. It's the most fascinating story. So two versions. One is uh, the boring one. There's the, the cartoonist who just draws the cartoon and does the caption. But somewhere, and I couldn't find that again, but I just love the story, so let's pretend it's true. Well, they have the weekly, the, the, the weekly contest. So they have an image, and people have to write a headline for that image. And if you think about it, it's really funny because it's just an image. I mean, it's sort of like a, a man walking with a dog on the side of the road and looking into the distance. So, like, there's nothing about this drawing that is somehow funny. And now you have to write something that makes that cartoon or the, this drawing funny, which I find right. so fascinating because it's sort of, it shows that the, the humor is in our head. It's like the, our imagination of what we see, but there's no joke on the paper, just like this this line. So right. apparently sometimes they, they just have drawings and then uh, they have copywriters who write a line for this picture and make it funny. And I, I, I don't know, I find it super fascinating. And you can use a similar technique for for ChatGPT and I guess MidJourney by sort of like telling MidJourney and ChatGPT Chat like, okay, these are images that I have, do variations with that, and then you can go to MidJourney and tell MidJourney, okay, now this is the base image, do something like that. Absolutely. I've often thought about just creating an image and then just writing a story for the image itself. Because I like doing that as well. That that's a, it's a great way to break writer's block. Is just to write about something, you know, like this. Say this coffee cup. How did this coffee cup get to my house? The journey, the building, blah blah blah. So that that's another that's another thing about how I write. Do you know this? Um, and uh, it's a sign we are ending this call. Uh, going off topic. Shlomo, what is this guy's name on LinkedIn? He's he's a great copywriter from Israel. Um, okay. Slow or something. Uh, just chat with him yesterday, and he publishes workflows, creativity workflows on ChatGPT. He shows how he comes up with ad slogans on ChatGPT and sort of like using associations of like um, what was it yesterday. Uh, so there, there, there are techniques in copywriting for like the proper copywriters advertising to yep. sort of. Uh, spur uh, imagination and uh, creativity was sort of like do random associations of objects and that sort of like gives them ideas to write something. And he just takes these things and translates them to ChatGPT and has sort of this uh, mind machine combination which I find super fascinating. You have to check that's that. awesome. Send you this link. He, he's an amazing writer on, on, on LinkedIn. Awesome. John. Thank you so much. I am super excited for this new feature. I wonder when we get it here on the other side of the <laughs> the pod. And I think, so. I mean, I'm excited on the one hand, closing thoughts here, but on the other, and it's not a but, and on the other, it sort of like goes back to you still have to know who you are, what you want, what you stand for. So ChatGPT. And I guess never any AI can solve that for us. If we don't know who we are, what we stand for, what we want, uh, AI can't do that for you, uh, for us. Right. Uh, so it's we have to you we, we have to approach the tool with an idea of who we are, so we can then use it. And all of these amazing things we can do, just like 10xing once we've understood who we are. It can 10x uh, our output and maybe also our creativity. And you've shown us how we can do this. So, 100%. Cool. John, 
thank you. Closing words, people who want to talk with you apparently can find you on LinkedIn. Um, who should reach out to you and why? And now now you are 30 seconds of fame for KickBank <laughs> and John Moore. Reach out to me if you are a hiring manager in need of IT solutions or needing hiring for your IT projects. Also reach out to me if you need tips and tricks on storytelling because I love storytelling and you can reach out to me at my email address j more m o o r e at techbank t e k b a n k dot net or dm me on linkedin that is the easiest we shall do that john thank you so much super exciting conversation with you today and i am looking forward to seeing more of you on linkedin thank you thank you so much simon you have a good day